guys, I'm here with my mom, and we're in the backyard. This is Farkwell's Bone Culture. My mom's talking about the new one of a special kind of tree. Mom, say something. Okay, thanks, George. Um, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I am in my backyard in the first week of October. It's been really mild, so I still have things like um, cucumbers and tomatoes and things like that because it's been quite mild. Um, but I'm actually not here to talk about annuals. I want to talk about this plant over here in the chicken run. So here you can see there's uh, beehives. The ground is all torn up from the chickens and they will get kicked out of this area really soon and that will get a deep layer of mulch on top of it for the winter. Um, and then in the chicken run is this tree right here. Uh, this is Mespolis germanica, the medlar tree. Um, the medlar is an unusual uh, fruit. You can't buy it in the store, but it's been grown for centuries and centuries in Europe. Um, it's a really ancient traditional food. It is a compact tree that um, you can easily keep pruned to six to eight feet, um, and it's very compact in shape. It also has kind of unusual, almost tropical looking leaves and a really nice form and a very pretty textured trunk. So it's a um, good aesthetic plant in your garden, but it also produces a food crop that you cannot buy in the store. Um, people who watch my videos know I'm really big on growing fruit because I have four kids and kids love fruit crops. Fruit is also really expensive in the store. Um, and I want to grow varieties that have the maximum amount of um, vitamins and minerals and flavors. So I want to feed my soil really well so that my fruit is packed full of nutrition. And I want to choose varieties that have the most flavor and that I can't buy in the store. Um, real special rare variety. So this is a Breda giant medlar. It's a Breda giant because the fruit is supposed to be unusually large, not the plant. So let's go in and look at the medlar fruit itself. Um, I have a busted finger, so excuse my bandage. Okay, so this is the medlar fruit. There's one on the top and one on the bottom. The one on the top is closer to being ripe and it's also larger, more typical for medlar size. So I don't know if you can see in comparison to my thumb here. It is uh, smaller than an apple, maybe the size of an apricot. So the medlar is um, in the rose family. You can see this little guy here. It's in the rose family. It looks a little bit like a rose hip. It's a brown fruit when it's ripe and a little bit mottledy. You pick it when it is rock hard. We can go over and look at another one. You can pick it when it is um, rock hard. And then you can't eat it in that state. What you have to do is leave it on the counter or wrapped in a brown paper bag and allow the ethylene to help ripen the fruit. It will become very soft and pudding-like when it's ready to eat. So the term for this ripening process is called bletting, uh, B-L-E-T-T-I-N-G. So when you blet a fruit, you are strategically allowing it to rot to the point where it is um, edible for people. So another example of this is astringent persimmons are the same way. Um, you need to let them sit and become extremely soft on the counter uh, in order to eat them. So the medlar itself, what, what you do is, it, it does have seeds in the middle. You allow it to get really, really soft, and then you cut open this middle part, and you scoop out the filling with a spoon and don't eat the seeds. And it tastes like spiced, caramely applesauce, and you either really love it or you really hate it. So this is not the fruit for everybody, but even if you've never tasted a medlar, um, and you're not sure if you'll like the fruit or not, it's a great landscape plant, so I highly recommend growing it. It has very pretty white flowers in the spring. Um, like I said, it's really small, easy to keep pruned small, not fussy, not much bothers it. Um, the only trouble I've had is woolly aphids, and they can just be wiped off with a washcloth or um, a really strong spray of your hose. And that is it, I had no problems with the fruit itself. Um, oops, and I knocked one off. Um, so again, that's Mespolis germanica. Back up a little bit so you can see it behind my fig here. The medlar, and I highly recommend the variety Breda Giant. Significantly bigger. If you can't get it, I recommend a variety called Shirtwood. So thanks, we'll be back next week with some more plants from our garden.